All of us go through hard times, but how you respond in those times is often the most important thing. When younger, when I'd struggle, I often found myself in a non-productive state. The problem was that regardless of my issues, remaining in that state would have had detrimental effects, whether it be on my schoolwork or my job. In this video, I look at how I've learned to respond to hard times in a productive way, and specifically what you can do if you hit a similar impasse yourself. The reason I wanted to cover this subject is because not only is it something deeply personal to me, but it's something that literally everyone will have to face in their lives at some point. For me, it's been extremely difficult to cope with depressive states during certain periods of time, and in the past I've had moments where I've effectively mentally shut down while trying to deal with these difficulties. It's emotionally draining and can have negative compounding effects if left unmanaged. The problem I soon grew to understand was that even if I stop, the world around me continues to keep moving. So while a little downtime might be necessary, a prolonged period of downtime will only serve to hurt me further, and this has proven to be the problem for me. Today, I actively look to apply techniques which allow me to cope and remain productive during these times, as I understand I may go through periods of difficulty, but how I respond to them is fundamentally more important to my well-being. And this technique is built upon the idea of the incentive theory. You see, the incentive theory of motivation is a behavioural theory that suggests people are motivated by the drive for incentives and reinforcements. This means that when you focus on those incentives that pull you towards them, your intrinsic drive is to achieve those goals. And this is a fundamental lesson I apply in my life, as I have personal goals that I strive to achieve or maintain, and these are the driving forces to me behaving in alignment to achieving those goals, as well as remaining productive. So, to understand the fundamental aspect of how the incentive theory works, you need to understand types of reward, broken down into consumatory reward, or behaviour, and incentive reward. In consumatory rewards, you get instant gratification or satiation, but without any lasting effects. For example, when you eat when hungry, once your hunger is curbed, the effect of satisfaction of the reward is short-lived. Instead, what we want to stay productive is incentive reward, whereby we're driven by the pursuit and promise of the goal, which in itself is the reward as we feel a sense of progression to something meaningful to us. So in this instance, rather than pursuing something that's instantly gratifying, the goal is often something that's less tangible and larger in scope. This might be to be a good person, or to secure a long term future for your family. Those familiar with Stoic philosophy will be familiar with this concept, and it's something that can be related to Simon Sinek's concept of understanding your why, which goes deeper than the pursuit of just the result, but instead focuses on your mission. So why does this work? It activates numerous parts of the brain, including the hypothalamus, amygdala, and prefrontal cortex. This regulates hormonal activity, and can have both a dopaminergic and analgesic effect. Meaning, not only do you feel a sense of happiness from your progression towards your goal, but you actually better manage the pain you feel, making it highly beneficial when coping with difficult times. So now that we understand a little about the theory and the science behind it, let's look at its application. There is no one set way to apply these ideas, but over the years of trying to ensure I don't let myself struggle for too long, I've developed a system to help me cope with hard times. To begin, I first spend time reflecting on my goals and why they are meaningful to me. For example, without going into too much detail, one such goal is I aim to progressively grow myself as an individual, to be an example for my son. This is of vital importance and meaning to me, as I want to help him live a fulfilling and satisfying life, learning from my experience along the way. This reflection process helps me to have a clear motivation to work towards, but then I need to understand and focus on the individual tasks that help me progress towards that goal. Now, if I'm working to be a positive example for my son by bettering myself, I'm definitely not going to achieve that by wallowing in self-pity, so my immediate task is to identify those tasks which will help me be in alignment with progressing towards the goal. And guess what? A good approach to being better educated and improving myself is to create content on this channel. If you're enjoying it so far, please do leave a like and consider subscribing with the bell on for more content. Once I understand those other tasks, I can go ahead and make progress on that, something I usually do with the process of scheduling with time blocking. I've already created a video on this before, so be sure to check it out if you want to learn the process yourself. I'll link the video in the description. Ultimately, 
Following this process not only helps me deal with difficult times in a productive and useful way, but is vital for my mental health. So give it a try yourself and let me know how you get on when you do. Thanks for watching.